Hi and welcome to A Thousand Wise. My name is Huang Rei. Are you planning to go up to the sky? This might mean a trip into space in the West, but in China, it could take on another meaning. Technically speaking, 你要上天吗？你要上天吗？你要上天吗？你要上天吗？ Or, are you planning to go up to the sky? It's not really a question, but rather a sarcastic expression. The implied meaning is, "Who do you think you are?" Or, "If you think you are capable of everything, why don't you fly into space?" After all, rocket science is rocket science. But today, going into space might not be that far-fetched of a dream anymore. Here are a few proofs from recent months. Seventy-one-year-old British billionaire Richard Branson fulfilled his lifetime's ambition of flying to the edge of space. He successfully completed a 1.5-hour suborbital flight with five other crew members in the rocket plane. Jeff Bezos, who had previously announced to step down as Amazon CEO, came as a runner-up in the billionaire space race. Well, I have to say that commercial space travels might still be some distance away, and will be too expensive for most of us. But the longing to travel to the moon and the stars, and maybe even to live on these distant planets, has always been in the hearts of human beings. I mean, after all, who can say no to Earth gazing from space? No. Speaking of which. I have to admit my envy of the three Chinese taikonauts who are enjoying the fantastic views of the Earth and stars while living in China's space station named Tiangong, meaning heavenly palace, at the moment. I mean, can you think of anything cooler than living in a space station? <gasps> I wish I were there too. So, what life is really like inside the Heavenly Palace space station? What are the daily routines of the three Chinese taikonauts living there? It seems they are doing pretty well in the space station so far. Their living conditions seem fairly cozy to most of us. Don't you think so? First, space. Think about a five-story building. The core module of China's space station is even taller than that, and it's wider and more spacious than a train carriage. Living space in the core module is about 50 cubic meters. Together with the two lab capsules, the living space of the Heavenly Palace adds up to be 110 cubic meters. Much bigger than China's first space lab, Tiangong One, which was only 15 cubic meters. In terms of the size of the living areas, you can even say it's somewhat like a tremendous upgrade from a small apartment to a penthouse. Besides, the core module is divided into six different zones for work, sleep. Sanitation, dining, healthcare, and exercise. Three taikonauts also have their own separate bedrooms, but they have to fix themselves into their sleeping bags to prevent unintentional sleepwalking. What's more, the space station is equipped with a lot of cool stuff to ensure a better living standard for the taikonauts. For example, Wi-Fi. The arguably absolute necessity for each one of us covers China Space Station, so that astronauts can call or video chat with their families. And cabin lighting has different modes for work, sleep, and exercise. Are you interested now in a trip to the space?
If you have followed us, you probably know the meaning of the name of China's space station, Heavenly Palace, which, according to Chinese folklore, is a luxurious place in outer space and where the deities live. The name reminds me of an ancient poem, Prelude to Water Melody. Written by Su Shi, the well-known official and literateur from Northern Song Dynasty. 不知天上宫阙，今夕是何年 In the heavens on this night, I wonder what time of the year it would be. I guess the centuries-old question can be answered now, thanks to the numerous courageous space explorers. And that's it for this episode of Space Talk on a Thousand Wise. Thank you for listening. Be sure to give us a rating or leave us a comment if you liked our show. I'm Paul Ray. See you next time.